Hey everybody, welcome to our first video on basically good food. Uh, on this YouTube channel, we're gonna be talking about fishing, uh, family fun, cooking, and just some fun stories. So uh, this first video, we're gonna start out talking about red snapper fishing. This is gonna be a good uh, how-to video. Uh, also enjoy a little bit of footage of us catching red snapper. A uh, red snapper's coming up in a season is coming up in a few months so maybe some of this information will help you out uh, so without further ado we're going to talk about tackle um, let's start out by talking about rod selection so um, you could fish with just about anything you can catch red snapper on a cheap combo you know from walmart or whatever um, if you do go that route i do recommend you invest in some high quality fishing line at the very least um, if say you go buy a combo for forty dollars that can hold you know a, like a spinning combo which would probably be the the most affordable like this one here um, this is not the cheap Walmart one I'll get to that in a minute but if you do buy I wouldn't recommend buying one that has line pre-spooled on it uh, you don't know how old that line is uh, especially if it's monofilament it tends to get brittle over time uh, so you will be heartbroken when you do hang your first big red snapper and the line snaps like it's nothing so uh, I recommend investing in some good line line like Andy um, uh, Berkeley big game just something a little bit more of a name brand don't just get the the generic kind uh, I would go with 30 pound test uh, or more um, at least you can go lighter um, you're just going to work a little harder to get the fish to the boat. Uh, the reason I like to go heavier, 50 pounds or above, is a lot of times you're fishing close to the bottom and you might hang a nice big grouper. Uh, grouper is better eating than red snapper in my opinion and it's a fish I don't like to lose when I, when I hang one. So uh, you want to be able to put a lot of drag on that fish and pull him out off the bottom before he breaks you off. So anyway, this is a Shimano Spheros. Um, Fishing reel, they run about $200. It is a good quality reel. Um, it's the 10,000 model. It's got a big uh, uh, handle here. Get a lot of yards per crank. Uh, it's, it's paired up with a Shimano Talus. Uh, I think these rods run about $160 each. Um, it says here that the line recommended line weight is between 50 and 100 pound. I have 65 pound braid on here. and. Uh, Spin and tackle is great. You can do all kinds of uh, different options with this. You can fish top uh, water with no weight. You can fish with the weight. You can fish it off the bottom. You can jig with it. Um, I really enjoy my spin and tackle. And it's probably the cheapest route to go if uh, you're just getting into this. Um, I don't recommend going uh, too expensive too quickly. People always ask me all the time, what kind of rod would you buy? And I tell them I'd go and get the cheapest rod and reel combo but buy good line to go on it uh, from a Walmart or Academy or something like that. Well, oh, why would you do that? Well if you go and buy a $700 or $750 combo like this and it sits in your garage all the time and you never use it, um, that's the issue. So uh, yes I did spend seven, this is my most expensive one out of my uh, little collection here I'm going to show you. Um, I use this to catch yellowfin tuna, blackfin tuna, amberjack, grouper, red snapper, uh, you name it. Um, this thing can handle it. It is a, a very powerful combo. I'll go ahead right into talking about this one. This is an Avet Raptor. Uh, I'll read the little thing. It's uh, just to be sure I got it right. Uh, HX5 slash 2MC. Um, in case you want to look it up online. You got little clips here that you can clip to a belt if you wanted to. Um, it has the lever drag reel, which is instead of the star drag reel, it tightens it down. You push it forward to tighten it down. Has a strike set. And then the, the max drag on this reel is 44 pounds. Um, you know, for bodybuilders out there, you go, oh, 45 pounds. I curl that like it's nothing 20 times. Now, you put 44 pounds of drag on a rod and reel and fight a fish, uh, I guarantee you. I, there's not a bodybuilder. I would challenge any one of them out there. If you fight against 44 pounds of drag for five minutes or more, you're going to be feeling it, um, you know, fighting a big fish. So anyway, that's my, my most expensive combo here. I've got it. Uh, it's, it holds 500 yards approximately of 80 pound braid. 
Um, I've got Daiwa Tanacom on this reel. It changes colors about every six fathoms or so. Um, gives you a good idea what depth your bait is. Uh, once you get used to it or you know you watch your line color change as it goes out, that's one of the advantages of it, especially if you're fishing deep water. Um, and I've got it tipped here with 80 pound fluorocarbon. Now why do we tip uh, with fluorocarbon or monofilament? Well, the reason I do it, and I've got another rod combo here where I've already got it tied up, is this weight and this swivel, when you're letting it down, sometimes the bait spins and this can happen. It twists up. When it twists up, you notice how this it easily comes out. If you've got braid and you have any experience fishing with braid and it twists up like this, the weight spins and it twists up, it's not going to come apart like I just showed you very easily. In fact, what it'll usually do is it'll come down and create a knot right there. It doesn't take much. If line crosses over itself, you're fighting a fish, a line touches the boat, and it's under a lot, a lot of pressure, it'll break. Um, it gets cut, essentially. So, um, just to show you here, what I have is 80 pound fluorocarbon leader on an 8 aught or eight zero slash zero. I don't know why they call it aught, but that's what everybody calls it. A circle hook. That's about a three ounce uh, lead weight. A lot of times I'm fishing 60 to 80 feet deep, uh, catching red snapper. Three ounces is plenty. The fish will come right up under the boat sometimes uh, when you're chunking for them. Uh, a lot of times they're only about halfway down. So there's no need to have huge weights unless the current is just ripping. I have used as much as a pound. Uh, but I was fishing 300 feet of water in that case. But anyway, this is a, an 8 aught. I I've used anywhere from usually 6 all the way up to 9 when I'm fishing for red snapper. Uh, 8 is about the sweet spot I like to use. There's a big enough gap for the fish to get hooked. You have to use circle hooks. We're fishing here out of Pensacola, Florida. Uh, it's required by law and the hook has to be non-offset. What do I mean by non-offset? Some hooks, if you take them and you hold them up, and you kind of look right down them. If it looks like a straight line, that means not offset. If it's curved a little bit, that's an offset hook. Why do they offset hooks? Offset hooks, if you notice, if I take this hook and I bring my hand down and grab it from the sides, I can't get hooked that way. But if it's curved a little bit, as I'm pulling it, it'll dig into my finger and I'll be hooked. Why do they do that? Well, if a fish swallows the bait and you pull the the hook back up. It'll normally come back up out of his stomach. And if he's swimming off, this fish will, will typically get caught in the jaw, just like this, okay, when he's swimming away. That's the design of circle hooks. Why do they do it that way? I'll show it to you up close. Okay, it's about an 8 aught circle hook. Turn it to the side, you'll see it looks like a straight line. It is not offset at all. And that's required by law here. Okay? I will provide links to you know, the limits and the seasons and things like that. Uh, my F, myfwc.com if you just want to look it up. Uh, but anyway, uh, circle hooks are designed. One thing you do not want to do when you're fishing circle hooks and people who are not used to fishing with circle hooks, when I take them out, I have people come from Texas or even out of the country. Uh, what do people say, uh, well, if you can remember as a kid fishing with your dad or uncle or grandfather, they always tell you to set the hook, set the hook. Set the hook, you jerk as hard as you can, and you start reeling, all right? Big mistake people make when you do set the hook is they, get, they jerk and let the rod right back down. Put slack in the line, gives the fish an opportunity to put the hook. In any case, you do not want to try to set the hook on a circle hook. What you do want to do is as you start to see, you'll feel bites, you'll feel taps sometimes, things like that. You don't want to set the hook. It'll just pull the bait right out of the fish's mouth. It is a circle hook. It cannot dig into his jaw and hook him. Uh, what happens is the fish will grab the bait and start to swim off. As he starts to swim off, you might get some bites. The rod tip will start to bend. When that rod tip starts to bend, you just start reeling. As you start reeling, that hook will get caught in the side of his jaw and 
The harder he fights, the more it will dig in, and it will usually just catch him in the draw. If the fish is undersized or you have to release it for whatever reason, um, all you do is pop the hook out of his jaw. You're not, you're not belly hooking, he's not bleeding, he's not gonna die when you release him, essentially. So anyhow, that's the circle hook. As the fish grabs it, and then he starts to swim away, just like that, it'll pop into the side of his jaw. You can see that. All right. All right, we've talked about tackle. Talked about when the fish starts to bite. Let me talk to you just briefly before we cut over to some footage is about baits. Um, I will probably flash up pictures here of the different baits that I like to use. First, let's start with baits that we will catch while we're on our way out to the spot. Um, <coughs> excuse me. On our way out to the spot, we will go to some local wrecks or reefs and we'll catch um, on what's called sabiki rigs and I'll show a picture of one of those as well. It's a little rig that's got five or six hooks on it and you catch bait fish with it. You don't need any bait. Uh, you can tip it with squid if you want to catch different baits but that's another story. Um, three favorite baits I like to target using sabiki rigs is pilchards or LYs or greenies. Uh, different names for them depending on where you are in the country. Uh, here in Pensacola, a lot of people like to call them LYs. Uh, another one is a cigar minnow. Uh, great, great bait for red snapper, grouper, as well as the LYs uh, or pilchards. And then there's another one that we commonly catch here called Spanish sardines. Almost looks like a cross between the two. Uh, it's kind of long like a cigar minnow, but has the shiny sides and big scales just like a pilchard. So um, great baits, all great baits for red snapper. Um, you don't have to catch them on live bait. Um, we'll, we can talk more about that in future videos, but I do love fishing with live bait. I do love fishing with artificials as well, and we're going to do some of that. But uh, those are the three favorite live baits I like to catch on the way out. Now, uh, baits that you may catch in the bay or inshore near docks, uh, I have three favorite baits as well. Also work excellent for snapper, and you'll catch grouper, amberjack, and other fish on them as well. Uh, first one is pinfish. Again, I'll show a picture right over here. And then uh, pigfish is another one you'll catch while fishing for pinfish, whether you do it with rod or reel or cast net. And then finally, croakers. Uh, croakers are great, great baits. Um, they make noise. They got the name croaker. Um, you know, you can have a live well full of them. You actually hear them croaking sometimes. It's, it's pretty funny, but another excellent bait. Uh, typically, the baits run, you know, anywhere from three to five inches. Um, and again, uh, where I like to hook all of my fish, and I'll just show it in this video rather than I don't have a fish to show you hooking it on. Uh, but the front of the fish, my favorite way to hook them, and you can hook them all different ways, but my favorite way to hook them, my go-to way, is right here under the jaw. You can kind of feel that bone in the jaw, and then you come pop it out through his nose. Okay. Um, this way the fish kind of swims freely with the line. Um, if you hook him in the tail or something that, he fights against it. That's another way to do it. It creates a different kind of an action, a different look for the fish. Uh, you can hook him in the back. You can hook him in the tail. But my go-to way is typically right under the jaw and then down. Let the line down. Usually swims down pretty freely with the bait. Um, if you do hook him in the back of the tail, he might spin. That's okay. You might want to let it down a little bit slower so it doesn't twist up the line. But uh, anyway, uh, that's typically it. So what we're going to do now is cut over to some footage, uh, show you some red snapper action. Hope you enjoy it. And very much looking forward to, to sharing more videos uh, in the future. Jean has got her a fish. Look at that, another pretty fish. Oh my goodness, look at that. I brought that one in. Sure did. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Goodness, 
Turn them sideways. The other way. There you go. That's it, brother. All right. Mike, you want this little gaff? Well, I got Jackie's. Whoa! Oh. Nice! Let me get a... Oh, we can toss that little baby out. Yeah.